1, 17. And it says, Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible to God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful that he is the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God. You know, some people say, well, I can't see God, so I don't believe. That's the problem. Their unbelief robs them of the blessings that God wants to give them. If people would only choose to believe and have faith, even what they can't see with the physical eye. How many know you can see with the eyes of the spirit, your spiritual eye? There's an eye that you can see, not with physical eyes. And I always pray, God, let me see the invisible. Let me hear the inaudible. Let me hear you speak to me. How many want to hear God speak? Amen. How many want to hear God give you direction? How many want to hear his voice in those hours of your life? Because that's what God will do. He'll speak to you and show you. He said, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you things that you do not know in Jeremiah. He said, call unto me. You see, I believe today that the, when we call out to him, hallelujah, he will turn things around in our favor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know, I believe there's someone here today. I believe that everything that has been taken from you will be restored in Jesus' name. That the things that you've lost in the last number of years, I believe before the end of this year, your testimony will be, I have recovered all. Amen. Because God is going to do a work for you that you cannot do. That he's going to give you something that you cannot attain on your own. Because that's our God. That's what he can do. It's, it's, it's what he, he said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. Do you know what that translation also means? It is the breath of almighty God breathing in your direction. When he breathes in your direction, he breathed life into Adam. He breathed life into his nostrils. I believe that God will breathe on us afresh. Amen. He will touch us again. He will show us the way. He will lead us like that of a car when it's going down the highway and the lights are shining. How many know the car can only see what's at the moment? Now, God sees the big picture for our life. Amen. The things that we don't see. But as the car drives, it begins to see more. The more it drives, the more it sees. And that's the same as our walk of faith. We might not know, but we know what the promise of God has declared to us. So we receive it. And we claim it. And we believe it. Elijah, he heard the sound of abundance of rain before he saw the rain. And I believe today, that's what we need to do when God gives us a word. We need to stay strong and believe his word. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, you're going to be strong. You're going to rise up in your faith. And be like even Daniel, who was willing to be faithful to the Lord and never stop praying and serving the Lord. Amen. That's what God wants us to be, is faithfulness, is to serve him. Hallelujah. But these are the things we see is that through the Bible, God presented himself. He showed himself. I remember Moses and the children of Israel at the Red Sea and the Pharaoh that was after them. And their backs were against the wall. But what did God do for the people? He parted the Red Sea. Can you imagine the wonder there of God? The very fact that he could take a situation that looked hopeless. Maybe you have a situation today that looks hopeless. But God is saying it's not hopeless. It's not over. He's got a hope for your life and a future beyond what you ever thought you could get to in yourself. He can do what no man can do. And that's what he did for the Israelites when he led them out of Egypt into the promised land. What a wonderful working God we serve. Hallelujah. He said that he who began a good work in you will complete it. It's not a halfway God. You know, he's an all the way God. He does things. I mean, he, he, he finishes what he starts. And so that's why you can be confident that there is going to be a completion. Amen. Because even today, if you're going through a trial in the book of Job, it says there's an end date to your trial. Did you know that? There's an end to your problem. There's already, you might say, I'm going through things right now in my family. 
uh, I'm going through things in my marriage. I'm going through things with my finances, with my health. But you know, through every trial, there is an end date. Amen. And God is going to give what you need. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe today God is saying, don't be afraid. Because what I started, I will finish. Hallelujah. This is the truth. He said, fear not. How many know well, that's the big word? Fear not. You know that word, fear not, is in the Bible over, I heard, 300 and some times or something, I believe. or It's repeated, fear not, fear not, fear not. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. See, things aren't going to be the same they are always. God can change things in an instant. In a split second, He can shift things around. That's why this morning, if you feel pressured in your life in an area, don't quit. Keep praising Him. Keep thanking Him. When the battle's getting tough, do you want to know why? The breakthrough's just around the corner. I've found the greatest breakthroughs uh, come to my life at the most, I can feel the intensity. Whenever I know there's an on onslaught of the enemy trying to attack, I know that something good's coming. It's my indicator that the supernatural door is open, and that's why the enemy's fighting so hard. Because once you break through, hallelujah, things are going to be changed, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what God promises in his word? He says, because maybe you're here this morning, and you're asking, who will help me? Who will help me? Well, God has promised you in Isaiah, or Numbers, he said, I will fulfill my promise. I will help you. Amen. God will help you today. You're not alone. And you can be comforted in your heart. You see, I believe that the more we, we can tune into God, how many know we're going to be happier in our life? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of Jesus Christ. That's why if you're, you know, at times feeling a little low, and some maybe you're here this morning and you've been feeling low, low, low. Well, guess what? The joy of Christ is your strength. It hit me the other day, actually. I was going through my, my, my driving, and all of a sudden, it's like, God, your joy is my strength. It hit me. I said, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So when, I, when you go through a situation and you don't feel like praising God, or you're tired, or you're going through things in your family, you know what? Thank you, Jesus. The joy that you give, the world can't give this joy. It's supernatural. It's supernatural, the joy of Christ. That's why in a trial, you can be happy and rejoice. When people around you are going through things and they say, why is that guy so happy over there? You know, things aren't going well here, but he's happy. Why? Because he's got a, the oil of gladness. Amen. That's why I praise him for all he's done and all he will do. Because if he brought you to it, he will bring you through it. Hallelujah. Isn't that a good one? If he brought you to it, he's going to bring you through it. And that's why this morning I want to just encourage you uh, to keep praising the Lord. Because Peter and John were on the way to the temple called Beautiful in the book of Acts. There was a man who was lame, who was, walk, who was begging. He had nothing. And you know, Peter and John came up to him. And uh, the, be the beggar was crying out. But Peter and John said, you know, silver and gold we don't have. But we do have, we give unto you. Rise up in the name of Jesus and walk. Isn't that wonderful? They had the gift of the Holy Spirit. What a promise today that we have living in us. That's why I want to encourage you to let yourself go in God. To worship the Lord. Have a time with the Lord where you work, just focus nothing on but worship Him. Where you just come before Him and and, and, and just say nothing, but just stand and worship with your heart. And he'll begin to speak to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 You know what? Because God is your friend. Hallelujah. God is your friend. Isn't that wonderful? You are a friend of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, I am a friend of God. And how many know that is a beautiful testimony that we can be a friend of God. Jesus said, I call you my friends. Wow. The Lord says to someone today, go in peace. The Almighty God is with you. 
There is God who created this world, and nothing can stop his plan for you. Nothing. No enemy, no, no scheme, or en no plan of the enemy can stop what God has for you. See, the word of God is going to come to pass. Uh, you know, and that's the testimony. Thank you, Father. You know, I remember growing up in Kingston, that's where I'm from. And when I was, you know, born and raised there, I didn't even know I'd be preaching today like this. I didn't know when I was a kid. But I just know that when I, I when I was a young, you know, maybe six or seven, my heart, I just remember having experiences with God in my room. I was just six or seven. And uh, I just remember the presence of God coming in my room. And it was just, uh, sometimes I'd feel numb. I just felt warm. I just remember, uh, you know, I remember I, I remember I drew a picture to Jesus and I lifted it up in my room when I was about seven or eight. I just gave him, I want to give it to you as a gift. I, I drew him a picture. But I felt the presence of God. Because you know what? He's, he's touched by your worship. Wouldn't you love him with all your heart? It's just, that's why this morning Jesus said the two greatest commandments were love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then number two, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's love. See, God is love. And that's why this morning you can have confidence that you have a God who hears you and that because of the blood of Jesus over you, the Father sees you clean, righteous. That means you can come before him. You know, that's wonderful. But he, he doesn't see us in ourselves. How many know when the, 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 the uh, plague was going through the de uh, when they were in, in Egypt? The death angel was coming through. When the blood was on the doorposts of the place, the angel, the angel of death couldn't go in and touch them, you see. When you're in the blood of Jesus, the devil cannot touch you when you're covered in his blood. Because that blood is what breaks every curse, hallelujah, and forgives us and gives us eternal life. Hallelujah. We need to thank God for the blood of Jesus. And plead the blood of Jesus over your life. Plead it over your life. Thank him every day for his blood. Uh, you know, Smith Wigglesworth used to have communion every day. Praise God. He loved communion, you see, because I believe it brings us to the place to soul search our heart. Where are we with God? Like how, that's why the Bible has many times to believers to check your heart. Where are you with God? Uh, have you given everything to God? And that's what you call a self-examination. That... If we will judge ourselves, we will not be judged. We have to come to the place where we're willing to surrender our life. 